Welcome to my YouTube channel Medical Knowledge where learning medicine makes sense. In this video I will discuss about the common menstruation problem, dysmenorrhea. Dysmenorrhea is a painful menstruation typically involving abdominal cramps. It is broadly divided into two categories. The primary dysmenorrhea is a painful menstruation without evident pathological finding, whereas secondary dysmenorrhea is a menstruation pain with evident pathological findings. There is a fall in progesterone in the late luteal phase of menstruation cycle. As the corpus luteum regresses, there is a fall in progesterone level, which causes menstrual blood to flow. The increased prostaglandin causes increased myometrial contraction, which results in uterine ischemia due to reduced blood flow. The increased uterine activity, uterine ischemia, and sensitization of nerve terminal to prostaglandin leads to the pain in primary dysmenorrhea. A patient with primary dysmenorrhea has a low midline spasmodic pelvic pain that often radiates to back or inner thigh. The cramp lasts for first one to three days of menstruation and is associated with headache, flushing and dizziness, nausea and diarrhea, and fatigue. On pelvic examination in primary dysmenorrhea, there is no pathological finding. It is a diagnosis of exclusion. The treatment of primary dysmenorrhea include heat therapy and relaxation therapy, the use of painkiller, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs is the most reliable and effective treatment for relieving pain in dysmenorrhea. The combined oral contraceptive and progestin intrauterine device helps to reduce the menstrual blood flow and cramps by decreasing the amount of prostaglandin. If you like this video, then please do subscribe to the channel. The secondary dysmenorrhea presents with low midline pelvic pain that often radiate to the back or inner thigh, but it appears one or two days before the period and lasts for more than three days. The pain in secondary dysmenorrhea tends to worsen with age. Some of the causes of secondary dysmenorrhea are uterine fibroids, which are the non-cancerous growth that develop in and around the uterus. Endometriosis. It is a painful condition in which tissue similar to the tissue that lines the inside of uterus, the endometrium, grows outside the uterus, most commonly in ovary, fallopian tube, and the tissue lining the pelvis. Adenomyosis is a condition in which the endometrium breaks through the muscle wall of uterus, the myometrium. This results in severe menstrual bleeding and pain. Intrauterine addition commonly called Esserman syndrome, where there are bands of fibrous tissue that form in the endometrial cavity are also the cause of pain. Pelvic inflammatory disease is an infection of one or more of the upper reproductive organ, including the uterus, ovary, and fallopian tube. In pelvic examination, in case of secondary dysmenorrhea, there may be palpable uterine mass, cervical motion tenderness, adenoxal tenderness, and vaginal or cervical discharge. Normal abdominal and pelvic examination doesn't rule the pathology of secondary dysmenorrhea. We need to rule out ectopic pregnancy by performing beta SCG, perform urine analysis to rule out urinary tract infection, complete blood count with differential to rule out infection and neoplasm, and swabs should be taken for possible chlamydia and gonorrhea infection. Ultrasonography can be done to rule out ectopic pregnancy, endometriosis, fibroid, and intrauterine contraceptive device inside the uterus. And stereosalpingography can be done to rule out uterine fibroids, uterine sinicae, and laparoscopy or laparotomy can be done to visualize endometriosis or pelvic inflammatory disease. The treatment of secondary dysmenorrhea depends upon the type of pathology involved. Thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, then please do subscribe to the channel.